All right, as you're arriving, why don't you pop into the chat um, where you are connecting from? Let us know where you are right now. Get a sense of where everyone's spread over the world. Ah, Louisiana. Let me bring this over here so I can actually see. Lines are fat. Aswin from Louisiana, Mario from Zaragoza, Hartano from Singapore. We've got India, India, Illinois, India, 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 Poland, New Jersey, Rhode Island. Wow, look at all of these places. Kenya. Wow, this is a pretty international audience. Thank you, everybody, for joining. All right, we'll give it just a second, and then we'll get cracking. We'll start talking about building amazing sessions. All right, actually, while we're waiting as well, why don't you pop into the chat which project you've been working on? Let's do that. Let me bring it over here so I can read again. Which projects have you been working on as part of your mentoring? Linux kernel, PCI subsystem, CNCF, COBOL programming course, plugin system for Tremor. Wow, look at all this stuff. This is amazing. Falco adapter for the CNCF, Kubernetes, blockchain integration, Hyperledger, Hyperledger, Tremor, uh, Solang, Solidarity compiler, RISC V, Litmus Chaos. This is great. All right, folks, so why don't we get started? So, hello, everyone. My name is John O'Bacon. Um, I've been in the open source community since 1998, which is about 200 years ago. Um, and I've spent many, many years working with the Linux Foundation. And uh, um, the team reached out to me the other day and said, hey, we've, we've been running, you know, we've got this incredible group of mentors and uh, they're gonna be presenting what they've been doing and we'd love to do some speaker training. So they said, would I be interested in helping out? So happy to help. Uh, my background is that I used to lead community for Canonical for the Ubuntu project. Um, I led community at GitHub and XPRIZE, and I'm a consultant. I work with lots of different companies, uh, including the Linux Foundation, where I help people to build communities. And my area of specialism is around open source and developer communities, okay? I've been speaking at conferences for probably about 20 years now. Um, I've keynoted over 100 conferences, um, so I've spent a lot of time screwing up presentations. I've spent a lot of time doing things wrong so I can learn how to present effectively. And what I'm going to share with you in this session is going to be a recommended structure for how you can put together one of these five to 10 minute summaries of what you've been doing in a way that's really crisp and clear and easy to read. I'm going to go through this structure. It's going to be very, very practical. Um, um, and then I'm going to also give you a, an example. I'm going to share an example with you so you can see it. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about slide design and how to deliver it effectively. All right, does that sound good? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me open up the chat. I wanna try and make this as interactive and as interesting as possible. Let me open this up so I can see what's going on. Um, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll have some Q&A at the end so we can, so we can do that as well. Um, all right, perfect. All right, so let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to the whiteboard and um, we're gonna first of all break the structure down of, of what a good session looks like. You see, when you're presenting any kind of information, whether you are presenting a 35, 40 minute presentation, an hour long presentation, whether you're doing a five or 10 minute summary, this is all about presenting information to your audience in a way that's quick and easy. There are a lot of people who go out there and speak at, present at conferences or elsewhere, and they tend to ramble. And part of the reason why they ramble is because um, they don't have any structure, they don't have any organization. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what is all the information we want to get down and structure it and break our session up. So five to 10 minutes is not a lot of time, but it's incredible how much you can squeeze into that amount of time. So let me first of all, break down the four pieces that we're going to cover in one of these sessions. And then I'll talk about each of them. All right. Okay. So let me go up here. So the first section we're going to focus on is going to be introductions. Okay. Now, generally, you want this to be about a minute long, right? Most people, when they see you speak, won't know who you are, and they won't know what project you've been working on. 
So the goal here is to briefly introduce yourself and talk a little bit about why you applied to the program and then to introduce the project that you worked on and, and uh, that you worked on essentially what it does, okay? So like I say, what I've done here is I present, I've created um, kind of a, a sample deck, if you will. Now, this is not particularly, this is not design. You'll probably want to add your own flair to it, okay? But the first thing we do before we even get into the introductions is we want to give, we want to have a cover slide and just, you, you want to pick a title for your session that's going to be interesting. So the example that I'm providing here is imagine somebody worked on the React project. So React is a, a JavaScript framework for build, building user interfaces, right? So imagine somebody's going to work on that for 30 days. So I pick this title from zero to React in 30 days. So think of a title that's going to really grab your audience. Now, when you're thinking about this title, make sure that it evokes some kind of curiosity. You want somebody to read this and think, Ooh, what does that mean? Right. So from zero to react in 30 days suggests that someone went from knowing nothing about react to contributing to react in 30 days. And this evokes some curiosity about what that journey might have looked like. OK, then you also want to put down your name and your email address. Now, one of the things you'll notice about my slides is that they're very, very simple. One of the problems with a lot of people who present is that they tend to overcomplicate their slides. They put too much information on the slide and you want to completely avoid that. Most of my slides, when I present at conferences, for example, have no more than maybe 10 words in them or just one picture in them. Um, because you're presenting, you're going to be talking through the information. You don't, you don't just want to read things off a slide because people get bored. Also, people can't listen and read at the same time. It's overly complicated. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to provide a short introduction. Right now, this is obviously not a picture of me. This is David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Um, but put a picture of yourself on there, and I'd like to recommend you you provide a picture of you in a kind of a fun setting, right? It might be a picture of you uh, doing your hobby or hanging out with a friend, or if you met somebody in the open source community, let's say you met someone like Linus Torvalds or Jim Zemin or whoever it might be, uh, just put a picture of you on there. And very, very briefly, no more than 10 or 15 seconds, talk about you and your background. Talk a little bit about um, about you know, you might want to talk about which school you went to or what got you into open source and talk about why you decided to apply and join the mentoring project. OK, now this has to be really short. People don't want a minute or two minutes of you rambling on about yourself. No offense, but no one's interested. They just want to get a sense of who you are. OK, so, you know, we've allocated, you know, we've allocated here one minute to this session, uh, to this to this section. So no more than kind of 10 or 15 seconds to just introduce yourself. And then what you do is you provide a quick overview of the project and what you set out to achieve in the project. So here you can see on the left, we've got about the project React, a library for building powerful user interfaces with JavaScript, right? So very, very simple one line summary because the people watching this mentoring session may not be familiar with the project that you're working on, okay? Um, and then you want to set out with your goals. Now, these are the things that you, at the beginning of your mentoring program, what you set out to achieve in that mentor, in that piece of the mentoring, okay? So you can see here, in my example, I've got three, three goals. To understand the internals of the project, to optimize the error handling elements of the code, and to submit over five pull requests that get accepted. Now, when you create this session, this five or 10 minute mentoring summary is going to be a brilliant thing you can show to potential employers. So if you're early in your career, you want to work in open source, you want to work for a certain company, this five or 10 minute session is not only going to be um, a great summary of how you went, what you did in the mentoring program, but it's going to be a, a great way of showing how you present information. So again, you can see here in the slide design, we've got a title at the top, and this, you'll see this consistently in my slides. We've got two columns of information about the project and then my goals. Not a lot of text on the screen, just a very simple overview. OK, so just to recap, pick um, an interesting curiosity of uh, evoking title for your, for your session, very brief introduction of who you are, and then a quick overview of the project and your goals. OK, so that's the first step that we step into. OK, that should take no more than about a minute. OK, and this aligns everybody with what you're about to present for the rest of the session. All right, let's move back to the to the board. And now let's put on our second section. OK. 
And this is where we talk about skills, okay? Now, this is essentially where you're gonna introduce what you were tasked with in the project and you're gonna share three key skills that, that you gained based upon really measurable outcomes, okay? So I'm gonna put over here, in fact, let's, let me use a different pen, hang on, a blue pen, okay? So we're gonna put here three skills, okay? So that's what you want to focus on in this section, okay? Now, this is where we kind of get to the crux of what you learned in the, in the mentoring program. And I'm going to switch back over to my slides here. And here is an example of what I'm talking about, okay? I've broken it down into three different slides, okay? Now, this is one, one of the techniques I like to approach with any kind of presenting, is that you break your information down and you reveal it to your audience, okay? If you put all of these things on one slide, it's gonna be overwhelming. It's gonna to be too difficult to understand. So you can see here, what I did is for the first one, first of all, we've got the title at the top, again, consistent. And then we've got how the internal React code works. So that's the skill that you developed in this example. We can see that we've got an image on the right. Um, and then we've got a summary of what was kind of covered by that skill. So how the internal React code works, three bullet points, code structure and organization, coding standards and requirements, unit tests and coverage. And you'd walk through that. You know, you'd say something like, you know, so one of the first things I learned while I was going through the mentoring was how the internal React code works. You know, I couldn't go and create pull requests for the React project if I didn't understand how the code works. So in doing this, what I did is I understood the code structure in the organization, how everything fit together, how the classes and the methods were working. I understood what the React code, what the React project requires when it comes to coding standards uh, and requirements. And then also testing was a fundamental part of this. So I understood how the unit tests and coverage work. Okay. And then, like I say, you put a, you put a, a um, you put an image on the, on the right. Now, what I didn't cover, which I should have covered here, if I go back to the board is, let's write this down, is this is going to be three minutes long. Okay. So you want to cover about a minute for each of these different, um, each of these different slides. Okay. Now, if it's not a hunt, if it's not a minute, it's fine. If it's less, don't go over a minute because we need to keep everything within 10 minutes within our, within our section, okay? But what you want to do is just summarize what you did. Don't go into exhaustive levels of detail. And ideally, your image here will be relevant to what you're talking about. If it's not 100% relevant, that's fine. Like you can see here for the one that I'm going to get to about contributed production code, I just took a picture of GitHub and that's fine. If you're wondering where you can go and get images from, Google Images Search is a great place. It's very stock photo libraries that are out there. If you use an image, you should probably put some attribution at the bottom. But just go and, 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 and visualize what you were doing. So as you can see, again, the slide design is really, really simple. It's really clear. We, we, we talk about what we did, how the internal React code works, and then we talk about the elements within that. So to, you know, that's the first skill, and we want to present three skills. So the second skill that I've got here uh, understanding and creating error codes, understood and tested uh, core errors with a script, created six new error codes, tested and contributed, um, created docs that were reviewed by the team, tested errors in production. Now, what you want to do when creating these um, bullet points is you ideally want to share as much measurable, um, as many measurable achievements as, as possible. So, for example, created six new error codes says very specifically, this is what I did within this error codes project, okay? The problem with a lot of people who present summaries of something like this mentoring summary is they tend to share general things like spent time with the project maintainers, you know, um, join Slack, you know, they, they share these kinds of just general things and that doesn't get specific to the outcomes. And what your audience wants to hear here is, what were the outcomes of your mentoring experience? What, were, what was the result of it? Okay, so try to try to list in these bullet points where you can measurable things. Now, not everything is going to be measurable, right? Understood and tested core errors with a script is measurable. Okay, um, if we go back to this one, you know, understanding coding standards and requirements isn't measurable, right? That was just something you had to do. So generally try to focus on measurable things, but if you can't, that's fine. But what you definitely want to do is have measurable things that you achieved in each of these different examples. 
Um, again, you can see the image here is just a general kind of photo, a, a general image of, a, of an error code. Uh, I tried to find something specific to React and I couldn't. Um, and then again, this image here, this third one is just the, the GitHub Octocap. So the, the skill here, contributed production code to React Core. You can see here some specifics. Contributed 12 pull requests, that's seven more than my goal. So if I go back to my goal here, remember here, to submit over five pull requests that get accepted, okay? So here we contributed uh, 12 pull requests. Uh, learn code submission and review pro, pro ooh, 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 let's fix this. See, this is the other thing you should do. Proofread your slides, which I didn't do. Responded to feedback, fixed my branches and improved. All contributions merged into the core. Now, this one's really important, all contributions merged into the core, because that's basically saying anything, any code that was submitted was reviewed by the project and it passed all the quality requirements and went in, okay? So at this point in, the, in, in our structure, you can see what we've done in literally four minutes, we've said, uh, we've evoked curiosity, okay? Introduced ourselves, introduced the project and what we set out to do, and then shared the three major skills that we developed in the mentoring program. If someone was to log off at this point, they, will have, they would have most of the information that they set out to, 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 to understand um, from you, okay? So this, this is great. We've delivered real value in four minutes, okay? Now, mentoring isn't just about what you get out of it. It's not just about accomplishing a certain set of skills, but mentoring really is about the experience. You know, I know my friends at the Linux Foundation, people like Schuer and, and the rest of the team, have really spent a lot of time focusing and perfecting how mentoring works. And it really is a world-class world mentoring program. I, when I was starting out in my career, never had the benefit of any structured mentoring. You know, I was kind of figuring out myself, but I met people in my career who became mentors to me. And um, while those people taught me amazing skills and helped me with my career, you know, so I got something very practical out of it. The real value for me was the experience of being mentored. It was about building that relationship with your mentor. And it was about the surprising things that you learn from going through that mentoring experience. And this is where we get into our third section. Okay. Now, as I'm uh, walking through this, if you've got any questions, be sure to get them into the chat. We're going to be covering them at the end. I want to make sure that we cover absolutely everything that you that, that's on your mind as we go through this. So the third section here is the experience. Now, this again is going to be three minutes long. Okay. So this is taking us up to seven minutes in our session. Now, what we want to do here is we want to cover, I'm going to use the blue pen for this again, three surprises. Okay. One of the things that people love in any kind of um, presentation session is they love when a speaker is vulnerable, when they say, I don't have all the answers and I didn't have all the answers. Um, and these were things were that were surprising and exciting to me. And going through a mentoring program, by definition, you're gonna experience things that are gonna be surprising to you, right? There's gonna be, I'm sure every one of you, um, and feel free to put this into the chat, like I'm sure every one of you experienced things that you weren't, ex weren't expecting. So what we want to do in this third section is we want to talk a little bit about um, how we worked with our mentor. And then what we want to do is to share these surprises, because that's going to keep the viewer of your session um, interested um, as you're continuing through this. Because if you think about it, as we go back to this, you know, we, we perform the introductions, we walk through our three skills. So at this point, they could conceivably log off or, or stop paying attention. But now what we want to do is we want to say, like, I now want to talk about how I learned and some really surprising elements that kind of came out of this. So if I go back to the deck, so when you've got to your third skill, at this point in your session, you say, so these were amazing, you know, you, you walk through three skills and you say, now, as you can tell, like, I took a lot away from this and I really appreciate the Linux Foundation for um, providing me with, this, with these benefits, right? But mentoring is not just about these skills, mentoring is about the experience. And I had a really wonderful experience. I wanna talk a little bit about that and I want to share some things that really surprised me about my mentoring experience. When you say that, 
that is going to pique somebody's curiosity and to keep them watching. And when you're presenting, you know, part of the reason why I'm doing the speaker training is not just for the mentoring, but it's when you go out to conferences and present or when you do keynotes in the future, or whatever, um, always having those little moments where you evoke somebody's curiosity will keep somebody, will keep the attention of your audience um, captured and present. Okay. So let's, let's, um, let's first of all talk about, about your mentor. So again, what I've done is I've broken this into, um, into two different sections. Again, you can see my slides here are very consistent. So at the top, my mentoring experience. So on the left, you talk about your mentor. This is uh, obviously not a mentor. This is Betty White, who sadly passed away recently. So, um, you know, Betty, we love you. Um, so I put here, Betty White has been a core contributor to React for many years. She wrote most of the internals, which is hilarious. Um, so just talk about your mentor, just a single paragraph that summarizes their role in the project um, and a picture of them. Uh, make sure you ask them for permission before you put a picture in there. Um, some people don't want their images in presentations, so you want to respect their privacy. And then you summarize here with bullet points, um, basically what the mentoring looked like. So discussed and agreed on my goals, weekly mentoring calls, better reviewed my pull request before I submitted them, guidance with interpersonal elements of the open source community, and overall guidance on career goals. So you can see here in the how we work together section, we're talking about not just the specifics in terms of the project, but we're also talking about um, elements around it, like career direction and interpersonal, like the community element. It's not just about code, right? It's about how you work with other people and how you build code or how you participate in a particular project. So what this slide does is it presents your mentor and it presents the, the result of the mentoring experience. Now, this slide is a cue for you. I'm going to go back to, um, to the board, okay? And what you want to do is here you want to provide thanks, okay? This is really important. People really appreciate appreciative people, right? And, you know, mentoring takes a lot of work on behalf of the mentor. So you want to make sure that when you're on this slide that you thank your mentor, okay? Just talk about how there's such an awesome person. Say, I really, you know, I had a great experience. I really appreciate the time. I learned a lot. Um, I was able to ask and, and get great answers to, to, to my questions. Uh, it was just a really great experience. Okay, so this is the cue. All right. Now what we do is we move on to the three surprises. Now, if you remember earlier on, I talked about revealing information. Um, so we know we've got three surprises, right? And we've, we've got that in the headline of the slide. So you can see that there's no content on the slide because what we're going to do is we're going to present each of these different surprises one by one, okay? And I present this very in, in a very easy way. Now you could go back to this kind of structure if you want with an image, or you could just have text. I am using text here just to mix it up. You see how my slide design is kind of varying a little bit, okay? So the first surprise, the technical guidance was very helpful, right? So at this point in the session, I would say something like, you know, um, I was expecting the mentor to be helpful with some elements of how I participate in the project, but just the depth um, and, the, and just how broad um, Betty's support was really surprised me. I didn't realize how deep her experience was and that she would be helping with so many different elements of how I was contributing to the React project, okay? So you talk about this a little bit. Now, given the fact that this whole section, okay, this whole section is three minutes long and we've got you know, we've got this slide, which is introducing your mentor. You want each of these different surprises to probably last about 40 seconds. Okay, so we've got enough time to cover everything. So talk about um, each of the different surprises. So the examples here that I've got, technical guidance was very helpful. Uh, I needed more guidance on navigating the community. So you could say, you know, Betty was, you know, I'd never worked with an open source community. I had a lot of anxiety around that. I didn't really know what to do. Um, I was worried I was going to put my foot in my mouth. I was worried that I was going to frustrate people. I was going to ruin my mentoring experience because of this. Um, and Betty provided amazing guidance for how to deal with this and how to react to some of the feedback that I was getting. Again, you want to be vulnerable. You want to share where you didn't know something, where um, you lacked the experience. Because here's a really critical thing. If you're earlier on in your career or you've not presented very much to an audience, 
it's it, the, a lot of people and especially people in underrepresented groups will experience uh, will have elements of kind of imposter syndrome and imposter syndrome is where you feel like you're you're in a kind of a community or a business or whatever and you're not everybody seems to think you're good but you're secretly not very good and you haven't been found out yet and this is a very very common psychological trait that impacts a lot of different people um and uh like i say it's, it's common in, in underrepresented groups i've experienced it a whole bunch in my life um and the problem with imposter syndrome is it can make people be re reluctant um in sharing where they aren't great or where they did lack experience okay but the what i've learned in my in my career is that when you share that vulnerability when you say you know i didn't realize um that I lacked these skills, or I was scared about something, I was nervous about something, a lot of anxiety about something, or I went and did something, I completely screwed it up. Um, when you share that kind of vulnerability, people respect that, right? Because they can identify with it, because we're all vulnerable. We're all anxious in our own ways, especially right now with COVID going around, okay? So don't worry about you know being vulnerable and then somehow that reflects poorly on you or it doesn't make you look very good um that's not going to happen okay when you share your vulnerability and you share how somebody helped you or how you crossed it or you battled that vulnerability it's a really powerful story it's the, the greatest stories in the world are where somebody's weak and then they become strong again, right that's that's the, i mean that's every great movie has got that behind it okay so when you're going through and sharing these surprises, share your vulnerability, share how you didn't know things, share how you worried or you're anxious about things and how your mentor played an amazing role in doing so. So the third surprise I got here was, you know, really helpful career guidance. Okay. So, you know, Betty was really helpful and helped me to figure out like what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to be a front end engineer or a back end engineer, whether I wanted to work in DevOps or whether I wanted to be a, a developer evangelist. But I had some really amazing conversations with Betty, and this was surprising to me. I wasn't expecting to get career guidance out of this. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go back and recap real quick um, um, what, we've, what we've done through, and then we're going to get into our fourth section, and then we'll talk a little bit about delivery and slide design, and then we'll do some QA. Okay. So the first thing, a minute, the first minute is introductions. Let me go back to the beginning uh, of my slides. First section here was introductions. All right. So this is where we, um, we have a, an exciting title for your session. You introduce yourself and then an overview of the, of the project and your goals that you set out to achieve in that particular project, okay? Second section here, this is three minutes long, is where you cover the skills, all right? So this is where you covered the three different skills that you, that you learned as you went through the mentoring experience, okay? Again, break them down, simple slides, an overview of the skill, some bullets that present what you learned within that skill, and then an image that visualizes the slide, okay? The third section here is about the experience that you went through as you were mentored, okay? Again, three minutes long. Make sure that you apply plenty of thanks here, okay? So this is where we talk about our mentor, and then how you work with a mentor to summarize the experience, and then you walk through your three different surprises, okay? All right. All good? Yeah? Pop into the chat if we're good. Let me, I haven't been looking at the chat because I've been looking at the rest of this, but let me just load up the chat and make sure I can see. Hang on, let me just uh, take a quick look. Um, okay, sounds good to me. Thank you, Mario. Uh, all good? Great. All right. So um, let me just touch this, this question from Anushka, I want to understand how do I balance personal versus technical information I present in my presentation, especially in the second section skills. Um, all right, so um, to me, um, Anushka, the, the balance of personal and technical, they're all part of you. They all make you who you are, right? You are a technical person and you have the elements of your personality. Um, I don't think you need to have a, a clear breakdown between either of them. But um, the thing about this about this this mentoring summary is that people want to hear the story. They want to hear a summary of of what you took away from it, 
and your experience of working with your mentor. So um, I don't think you need to present too much technical information in the sense of, I don't think you need to talk about, you know, provide metrics of, I wrote this many lines of code. I worked on these particular modules within the project. I did anything like that. Just talk about the overall outcomes. How, you know, how many pull requests were submitted or, you know, whatever you did within your project. Talk about the things that you achieved, uh, but really focus on the experience and talk about what you took away from it is what I would recommend, okay? Great stuff. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the chat. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna move on to our fourth section. All right, thank you everybody for your attention. So our fourth section here, and our final section is on aspirations. Okay, so this is gonna be two minutes long. Um, see, as you can see, we got one minute, four minutes, uh, seven minutes, and then nine minutes, okay? So this is gonna be, um, hang on, did I count that right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. Wow, I can do maths, everyone. Check it out. Uh, <laughs> so as we've been through all of this, right, you've introduced you, you, yourself in the project, you've, inter you, you've shared the skills, you've talked about the experience, You'd imagine at that point, you've basically taken away everything you needed to take away, right? You've shared everything you needed to share. Um, but there's one really important piece that's missing, and that is what is your dream for the future, okay? So this is where you talk about your big dreams, you know? So when people go into any kind of mentoring program, they're not just doing it to be mentored. They're doing it because they've got a bigger vision of the future. And you might not necessarily know exactly what you want to do in the future. Um, most people don't. I had absolutely zero idea what I wanted to do when I started out my career. It just kind of happened, you know, as I bumbled my way through my life. Um, so what you want to do in this final section is to share what you're dreaming about right now right, where you want to get to. And the reason why this is important is because there may be people who watch your summary of this, right? And I would recommend you share, I don't know if this is, I'm, I'm assuming this is okay. So I might get into trouble with the next Foundation if this is not okay, but I'm assuming this is okay. But when you present this and you've got a video recording of your presentation, I think you want to share this on LinkedIn. You want to share this on your social media. You want to share this with the world. And it's these aspirations here where if somebody watched your session here and they were impressed with what you did and how you presented and they can somehow help you with your big dreams, this is where opportunity gets connected in. All right, so let me go to my slides. And this literally can be just one slide, okay? Um, so here, my dreams for the future. So just summarize what you wanna do here. So my example here is I wanna work for staff. I wanna work for a company that is building open source, that is building interest in technology. I wanna learn more about client-side frameworks. It was fun working on React, but do I wanna work in other frameworks? I wanna get more involved in the React project and other projects. And I wanna speak at the Open Source Summit, right? So what we can see here, I wanna go and work at a particular place, start up. You might even wanna have specific companies you wanna list. I wouldn't recommend listing specific companies because let's say you said, I want to go and work at Red Hat, um, but then Canonical or Google uh, are interested in you. Um, you don't want to limit it to Red Hat because they may not have a job that's available for you. Uh, but these other companies that you would love to work at also might, might have positions for you. You can see here that we've got more about learning about the technology, client-side frameworks. We've got a open source component to this, get more involved in React um, and other projects. And then there's a speaking element, speaking at the Open Source Summit. So this is, I think, the most fun part, right? And what I would recommend you do is this, right? Go to, go grab a, the beverage of your choice. It could be coffee, it could be tea, it could be water, it could be gin, beer, wine, whatever. Go and grab a beverage of your choice and grab a piece of paper or two pieces of paper and a pencil and just sit down and just think about what you want to do in the future and just write everything down. No one's going to see these pieces of paper. 
think about all the companies you'd like to work at. Think about the projects that you'd like to work on. Think about, you know, would you like to speak at conferences? Would you like to keynote at conferences? Um, would you like to be on um, advisory boards? Would you like to invest in companies? Would you like to be working in venture capital? Um, who are the people in open source that you'd like to meet? Would you like to meet Linus Torvalds? Um, would you like to meet Greg Crowe-Hartman, Jim Zemlin, uh, whoever it might be, right? Go and write all of these things down on pieces of paper. And then from all of these things that you've written down, pick three or four aspirations that summarize everything that you're interested in. You know, and this could be, I want to work for these kinds of companies, or I'd like to speak, or I'd like to start a podcast, I'd like to start a YouTube channel. Um, think about all these different elements and write them down and then summarize them and then put them on this slide. Okay. And now what we've got, if you, if, if you look at this, we've got 12 slides and about 10 minutes to present. So this is one of the reasons why I've broken it down into these timed sections. Okay. But what we've done is we've got a title that evokes curiosity. We introduced ourselves. We introduced the project and what we set out to achieve. We talked about the three different skills that we learned in our mentoring. We talk about who our mentor was and how we worked together. We share the three surprises that we took from our experience, and then we share our vision for the future. Okay. And that's it. That's what I would recommend. I'm more than happy to share this, um, this, uh, this Google doc with everybody. But um, one thing I would recommend is don't just don't just take my Google Doc and um, and just change the text. Okay, make it your own. Make it give you add your own personality into it. So I want to talk before we get into questions, and and um, we'll get to questions in just a second. I want to talk a little bit about about um, slide design and delivery. Okay. Um, now, one of the things that you really want to focus on um, is to focus on simplicity and clarity in your slides. There are far too many people out there who cram as much as they can into slides, these diagrams and overlapping circles. And some people see it as a badge of honor that you're somehow more experienced if you've got more stuff on your slides. And that is complete and utter nonsense, okay? The people who suck at presenting put too much information on their slides because we can't read it. You can't listen to someone and read all of that stuff at one time, right? You know, like if I show you my other screen that I'm looking at, okay, so this is my screen with my, with my slides on, okay, but this is my notes screen. Look at all that information. Some people will put that kind of stuff on, on, um, on their presentation, and that's, it's silly, okay? So you can't read all of that stuff, okay? So focus on simplicity and clarity. If you look at the slides that I've been putting here, there's not a lot on here, right, okay? Now, the other thing that you wanna, you wanna focus on is to avoid lots of text, but to, for the text that you do have, to use really simple and easy to read fonts. So if I go back to my slide C, you can see that the heading up here is this big bold kind of font. This is Babus, I think, Babus Neue. You can see that my uh, main font here, this is Gil Sands, something that I like to use, but this is a very readable font. I'm not using calligraphy or anything like that because people can't read it okay when people are looking at your slides they've got to be able to look at it and be able to soak up that information really really quickly okay now you definitely want to include like visual cues so you can see how i've used images here um if you use videos um and you may want to put videos in your slides um to kind of demo something so let's say you're talking about something let's say you're talking about the things that you learned, right? If we go back to our skills, you know, one thing you could do, if we have how the internal React code works, you could have a little video that's, you know, 10 seconds long that shows that. But I generally wouldn't recommend that because then people are watching the video and they're trying to pay attention to the video while listen <coughs> listening to you speak at the same time. And again, people can't do both of these things. They can't, they can't read or watch and listen at the same time, all right? Definitely make sure that you reveal information in phases like we did with this, okay? And what I do, <laughs> this is probably the wrong way of doing it, but what I do is I just go and write everything down, right? And then I just put a white square over it. And then you can see that the white square just covers the bits that I haven't got to yet, okay? Like that, hang on, like that. Simple way of doing it. You want to generally avoid 
all animation, like all presentation software um, uh, has the ability to animate things and to have slide transitions. Um, most of it sucks. Uh, it just doesn't look very good and it's distracting. Don't have things sliding, you know, people often have things sliding in and coming down and going and stuff like that. It, it looks cheap. It looks like you're using that to try and garner someone's attention, you know. Keeping things simple is better. If you're going to have any kind of animation, just have fades where something will fade in, okay? Just a gentle fade. I like to use fades to fade in, you know, like what we're talking about these things. So I like to have fades for each of these. So you'd show this and then each of these, each of these would fade it, okay? Um, and then generally avoid sound. Um, sound can add value to a presentation. I've seen people put like background music in presentations. <clears throat> There's two reasons why I would avoid sound. One is that it's a distraction. It doesn't add anything generally. But the second reason is that then you've got to figure out how to make sure that the sound is working with Zoom or however you're presenting online. And sound is just complicated. You know, sometimes it, sometimes it just doesn't work well, okay? Um, now, let me show you another, um, this is like a, hang on, this is like a general presentation that I do to, to show you a couple of examples here. So this is actually um, a full presentation that I do. This is not like a summary. You know, I introduce myself. I like to put this in there, just a little bit of fun to break the ice about how I pronounce my name. But you can see here, this is where I tell the story of how I got involved in open source. And these are just full images, right? Um, here you can see where I talk about the value inside a community, the value of the value that you, you can get from building great communities. I talk about how the importance of services to Seth Godin. So again, I'm not gonna go through this entire presentation, but you can see this is a, a reveal, but you can see how I just keep things really simple. They're very visual. Um, not a lot on each of these different slides. You can see again how this reveals. I talk through each of these different things as they get presented, okay? But I don't use lots of bright flashy colors, you know, black text on a white background. It's clear and it's simple and easy to read. Uh, whoops. And then as you're speaking, well, actually, before I go on, uh, the final thing is on, on, the, on, the, on the speaker, uh, on the slide design side of things, you may be thinking, which kind of software do I use? So I use Google Slides, PowerPoint, Keynote, LibreOffice. Um, as a general rule, I like to use Google Slides. While it's simpler and it doesn't offer as many features as something like PowerPoint, the fact that you can use it from it, it's completely free. You can use it from any computer. And it means that you don't have to move files around is one of the reasons why I love it, okay? And you have all of this big library of, of, of presentation, slide presentations that are then just online. Um, and frankly, the features that it provides are more than enough to deliver great presentations. So everything I do is in Google Slides. Um, now, in terms of delivery, a couple of very quick things I wanna cover and then we'll get onto questions. The first thing is to speak clearly and don't rush, okay? Um, if you're speaking a million miles an hour, it's going to be um, difficult for people to understand you. Um, and it's especially difficult if you speak quickly and you've got an accent, right? So, you know, I saw from the beginning of the session, we have people from all over the world. Um, so you definitely want to speak clearly because you're probably going to have an international audience as well. This is something that I, to this day, struggle with. I tend to speak fairly quickly. And my apologies if I've spoken too quickly today, okay? Now, what you also want to do, especially if you're new to presenting, is to create speaker notes, okay? So if I go to uh, my screen here, you can see here at the bottom in Google um, Slides, I can add speaker notes, okay? Just down here. Now, um, what this will do is this will be some notes that only you can see when you're presenting. Um, and that can be useful for, um, indicating the kind of things that you want to that you want to talk about in each particular slide. Now, the thing about speaker notes is don't write out a script. Don't read a script. It sucks when people read scripts. Okay, nobody. And I really enjoyed this particular part of my mentoring experience because I talked to my mentor on Mondays, Wednesdays. It's obvious when people are reading from a script. So just put speaker notes in there. When I've done speaker notes, I literally have just bullet points. But what I personally prefer is that um, you don't actually create speaker notes. And what you do is that you have just the right information on the slides like we've got here, right? You can see here, we've just got the right pieces and this becomes my cue, this becomes my speaker notes, all right? Um, and then finally, just be excited. 
right? You went through this awesome mentoring experience. You've learned these new things. This is the, the most amazing element of being a human being. Two, two of the most amazing elements of being a human being. One is love, is falling in love with people, your partner, your kids, your friends. That's the most amazing thing about being human. The second most amazing thing about being human is learning and growing and like, you know, feeding your brain with all of these cool things. And you just had both of these things, right? You had built a great experience with your mentor, which is love, and you learned some amazing things. So be excited when you, when you share this, you know, you'll have noticed that as I'm speaking, I'm not speaking in a monotonal voice. I'm saying, as I'm speaking, you have not, you will have noticed that I'm not speaking in a monotonal voice, right? Because that'd be boring. You know, I'm using lots of different ways of speaking. I'm using hand gestures. My voice is going up and down, varying in terms of volume. I sound like a weirdo now, um, but it will keep your audience interested. And then finally, and most importantly, practice. You've got five or 10 minutes. Just practice, 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 practice in the mirror, practice in front of your family, in front of your significant other, in, in, in front of your friends. Just practice, get some feedback. And when you ask for feedback, say to somebody, tell me what's not good about it, right? When you ask for feedback in anything, if you just say, hey, could you, can I present to you and you can give me some feedback? Everybody will always say yes. But if you don't give your audience, your, the person permission to be critical, they won't give you any critical feedback. And what we want from our feedback is criticism. We want them to say, that slide's a bit complicated. You spoke a bit too quickly. You know, those kinds of things are, are really important, okay? All righty, that's it. Why don't we do some questions um, and we'll see, well, let's see if we've got some questions. Let me, um, let me grab the old chat, okay. All right. Uh, Hans says, any suggestion for dressing uh, for clothes? Um, I think you should just dress to be you. You know, I mean, what I generally would recommend here is to, um, is smart casual, right? So you can see here for this session, I'm just wearing shirts, right? Um, I think if you wear a t-shirt, that's, that's fine. Um, so long as it's somewhat smart, um, you know, like when I'm not on a camera, I wear heavy metal t-shirts because I'm really into metal. I have a band called Baron Carter. Um, and, uh, so I think as long as you're smart, I think that's, that's fine. Um, is it appropriate to provide links? That's a great, a great, uh, idea, Sharon. Yep. Definitely provide links in your, uh, in your sessions, because if you share the slides with people, then they can click on the links. Is it okay to use them? Uh, Lucas, is it okay to use emojis in the presentation? I, yeah, I think so. As long as they're relevant. Um, I think it's fine. Don't use too many emojis. Uh, people who overuse emojis are annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right uh uh lakshia i'm by the way i'm gonna butcher some of your names and, and i'm sorry uh if i if i do so uh lakshia how often should we add memes to our presentation i think memes can be fun the key thing about memes is making sure that people understand them so you generally want to focus on memes that are um broadly understood like one of the reasons why i picked betty white and David Hasselhoff in my slides is because most people probably know who they are. Um, but even then, they're kind of Western celebrities. So people outside of the West might not be familiar with them. I wouldn't overuse memes because it can make your session look a little bit childish and cheap. So I use them sparingly, um, but they, they can be fun. All right, uh, get your questions in. I'm, gonna, I'm just going through the chat log to see if there's anything that I didn't cover. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. All right. Um, thanks a lot for the session. Uh, I already have a couple of things that I would like to improve my slides uh, from Shrianshu. Thank you, Shrianshu. Uh, by the way, um, I have loads of presentations that I've done online on YouTube. Um, so if you want to see kind of some of the things that I'm talking about, if you do a search for my name uh, on YouTube, you will find them. Um, um mario won't the presentations in the event be too repetitive if everyone follows the same structure yeah this is a good point mario so think of this structure as um as a general set of guidelines um so you know i would recommend you break everything down into the introduction skill like you know what we've covered here introduction skills 
experience and aspirations. This is the content that you want to include um, in your session. But the way in which you present it could be different. You might want to, for example, go through the introductions first and then cover the experience and talk a little bit about, about what you did and then cover the skills, you know, right? You might want to talk about introductions generally will always come first. Then you might want to talk about your mentor and what you experienced. Then you might want to talk about the project and then you might want to share the skills that you developed and then the surprises that you have. That you, that you develop from it. So generally, you're always going to have introductions at the front and aspirations at the, at the, at the end. But this bit in the middle, um, I think you can, you can mix and match this. Also, don't feel like you have to only present three skills. You might want to present five skills. Um, I wouldn't present more than five, and I wouldn't present fewer than two. Um, you might want to present you know, four surprises. The reason why I'm suggesting this breakdown here is that it gives you a set of things that you need to do that, that makes it easier to put together your session. Um, um, all right, let's see what else we've got. So, oh, and the other thing as well is a, a great way to personalize your session is going to be to make your slides look unique to you, right? So when we look at, um, you know, hang on, let me move this chat out of the way. If you look at my um, slides here, they're very, you know, they're very simple, right? They're, it's black text and a white background, but you want, you, you know, use colors and design and make it uniquely yours. That's going to make your presentation pop and stand out. Okay. Let me have a look at this, but great, great question, Mario. Um, uh, Shubham, I was planning to also discuss how I got accepted into the program. Should we do that? And I was thinking I, I, I could do, do that after my introduction. Shubham, this is a great idea. Um, you know, when we talk, this kind of gets back to Mario's point as well. When we talk about the structure, don't feel completely limited to it. You might want to add after your introductions, um, after your introduction or part of your introduction, like, why did you apply? You know, like, why on earth was this mentoring program interesting to you? You could talk about your the elation that you experienced as you went through it, right? You know. I'll give you an I'll give you an example if I go back to my slides here. You know, at the beginning of this presentation, which I was showing you earlier on, what I did to introduce it, this is about how to build communities. I introduced myself, clarified how you say my name. And then I said, you know, when I grew up in Northern England, uh, which was quite a boring place, everybody said this, people don't know their neighbors like they did back in the good old days. Um, and it was this kind of sign that community was dying. But then we've seen Wikipedia, open source, the maker revolution, we've seen crowdfunding, we've seen all these other great examples of communities. You know, a good example being Fitbit and all these great things that you can do within the Fitbit community, right? So what I do is I introduce the session telling the story. And that's another great way in which you could kind of um, introduce it. You could, this introduction here could tell your story about how you got involved in it. So again, think of these four areas as kind of like the chapters of your book. But what you put in each of the chapters should be unique to you. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Um, Puranjay, should we go into the technicalities of our project? If the project needs a lot of background knowledge to understand, I wouldn't go into too much technicality because I don't think it's going to be necessary. I'd share enough technicality um, for your audience to understand what the project is and what it's doing. You know, so. In my, in my example today, when I talked about React, I just said it's a, it's a, a, a JavaScript framework for building user interfaces, right? But if, in my example today, the mentoring was uh, learning how to write code and then merging that code and then contributing code into that project. Um, so I could explain that without a huge amount of technicality. If you are working on, let's say, a low-level kernel module, you might need to explain a little bit more about what it is. But just share the minimum amount of information necessary to help your audience understand what the project is. Because if you think about this, what we're doing is we're saying, um, here is a project. So you're setting the context of, that's the context, that's the environment that you're talking about in your story. Then you're saying, I didn't have these skills. Uh, and then I came in and I developed these skills. And these were the achievements that I, that I, that I uh, accomplished in this particular mentoring program. So you need to explain what the project is to be able to set the context. Um, um, so uh, again, get your questions in. Um, we've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, Han, just curious, how did you combine your two cameras, the camera that shows you 
uh, and the ceiling camera that shows the whiteboard, was that a functionality in Zoom? Ah, good question. Um, so I'm using uh, something called OBS. Uh, it's an open source project that you can use to, um, to create kind of a studio environment, okay? Um, so what I've got is this, hang on, let me zoom out. This little thing here is called a stream deck. Um, and what this does is it talks to OBS. And what I've got is a camera up there, which is a Logic, Logitech Brio webcam. It's plugged into my computer. And then I've got my camera over there that you can see. And then in OBS, what I've done is I've got, this is my normal camera view. I've got a zoomed in view, right? Um, then I've got a button here, which goes to the overhead view, right? And then you see how you can see this kind of like me overlaid on the top and you've got like these little animated dots in the background. I'm doing all of that in OBS, okay? And that's how it works. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, oh, and by the way, OBS has got something called a virtual camera um, that you can then take the output of OBS and you can you can put it into, into Zoom, right? So if I minimize this, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this, this is OBS here, and then um, and then you can see how it's it's this is my Zoom session, and you can see how this view here it looks a bit weird because it's all zooming out uh, is visible in Zoom. Um, uh, all right, Mritten J. I'm so sorry if that's if I'm butchering your name. Um, Thanks for this extremely amazing session. Thank you so much. Uh, can we add a live demo of our project in between? I think doing a, if you've got a demo that's no longer than maybe a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, um, absolutely. People love demos. If you built something, let's say part of your mentoring program was to build a feature, uh, then having, you know, what I would recommend is, is as part of when you go through the skills piece, um, showcasing, showing off, uh, you know, let's say, Skill number three is that I built the thing, right? This is my accomplishment. And then demoing it, I think would be brilliant. What I would recommend if you do, if you want to do a demo is that you um, pre-record it. You can use uh, screen recording software. Uh, it's available on Linux, Mac, Windows. And what you do is you create a video, remove the sound, and then you walk through what you were doing, okay? That's going to be the best thing. I wouldn't recommend doing the demo live and sharing your screen because you may have technical issues when you're presenting. You know that if you create the demo video, then you're good to go. So you remove the sound. And then what you do is as you're going through the demo, you talk through the demo as the video is playing. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, Shubham, I think this is going to be our final question. Um, What's a good way to end the session? I was thinking about ending it. Would would love to interact with you and my relevant links. Shubham, that's a great a great idea. I should have honestly. I, this was an oversight on my on my part. I should have added a slide on this. Yeah, just I'd wrap up the session. Thank you, audience. Say thank you so much uh, for 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 watching my session today. Make sure you thank your mentor again. Thank you, Betty, for all the amazing guidance you provided. Thank the Linux Foundation. Thank you to the Linux Foundation for running this amazing mentoring program. This was phenomenal. And then I would have a slide at the end that's got your, your if you've got a website and then your contact link, like certainly put your email address on there, okay? Um, you might even wanna, if, you, if you're using a social media service like Twitter or Instagram or whatever, put your links on there as well. That's how I would, how I would do it. All righty. Um, um, and then final question, Han, unsure if I missed that part, do you recommend we have maybe a minute for questions and answers? I probably would skip that. I don't think you've got enough time, five to 10 minutes. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this was useful. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My door is nailed open. It's jono at jonobacon.com. You can send me an email um, and we'll wrap it up today. Thank you. All the best with your sessions. I'm looking forward to seeing it.